One of the iconic pictures that we find in the Bible is found in John chapter 13. It's Jesus washing the disciples' feet. It's such a contrast, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords serving in such a way. But why did Jesus wash the disciples' feet? And more specifically, what can we learn from Jesus washing Peter's feet? Today on Hot Topics. Hi, this is Robert Furrow. Welcome to Hot Topics. We're glad that you found us. If you're new here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell that you can get all of our new videos. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he gathered all of his disciples together in an upper room and he gave what is called the upper room discourse. Not only did they enjoy the meal together and were given what we call communion today at that Passover meal, but Jesus also told them about him leaving, who would betray him, who was going to deny him. After the meal, before he had this discourse with him, he got up, he took off his outer robe, and he put a towel around his waist, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. There are a few things that I think that we need to understand as we take a look at Jesus doing that. Number one is that the disciples had been arguing for a while about who was going to be the greatest. In Luke 9, 46, they talked along the road about who was going to be the greatest. And when they got to their destination, Jesus said to them, he who is least in the kingdom of God will be the greatest. In Mark 22, 24, he knew what they were talking about. And so he put a child in front of them and said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you have to become like this child. In Mark 9, 34, he asked them, what were you talking about along the road? And they didn't want to tell him because they were arguing over who was going to be the greatest. They knew that they were in this thing on the bottom floor and they thought they were going to be great. And I love that Jesus never rebuked them for their desire to be great. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2, 3 to do nothing out of selfish ambition. But what Jesus did was redirect them. You want to be great? Then learn to be a servant. You want to be great, then wash people's feet. You want to become great, then become least in the kingdom of God. This is that inversion principle. Take the last place and you will get the first place. Humble yourself and God will lift you up. So Jesus goes around the room and he's washing the feet of the disciples and everything goes okay until he gets to Peter. And of course it's Peter because Peter's not afraid to tell the Lord no. Even after the resurrection and a vision he sees a sheet come down with all kinds of unclean food on it. God tells him to rise, kill, and eat. And Peter says, no, I won't do it. And he did that three times. And so here it says in verse 6 of John chapter 13, then he came to Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. There is an important principle here that Jesus tells us to do things sometimes that we don't understand why we do it, but we'll know later on. It's important to be obedient even if we don't understand why. Then in verse 8, Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. What a stance. Jesus answered and said, if I do not wash you, you will have no part in me. He didn't say, if I don't wash your feet, you'll have no part in me, but if I don't wash you. And here he's using an analogy to speak of the cleansing power that he brings into our lives and that we are ransomed and washed clean by the blood that was sacrificed for us. So in verse nine, Simon Peter says, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Peter truly wanted everything that God had for him. And Jesus said to him, he who was bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So he knew that Judas was going to betray him. So he says, you're not all clean. But he tells Peter, you are clean. And all I need to do is wash your feet. So there are four things that we learn specifically from Jesus washing the feet of Peter. Number one, we have to be washed completely by Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In 1 John 1, 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sins. So as we interact with him and enter into a relationship with him, Jesus said in John 17, 3, This is eternal life, that you know the one true God and the Son whom he sent. 
as we enter into that relationship and fellowship with him, our sins are cleansed by the work that Jesus did for us upon the cross. In Hebrews 10, verse 17, it says, then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So the Lord cleanses us when we are born again. He washes our sins away and we are pure. The Old Testament had said, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. And that's what God does to us when we're born again. The second thing we learn from Jesus washing Peter's feet is that we need to keep things right between us and God. We have a tendency to fall away. The Old Testament says that we, like sheep, have a tendency to wander. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish when we were born again, that we didn't have a sin nature anymore. I wish there wasn't a battle inside of us, the flesh struggling against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, but there is. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth of God is not in us. I've actually had people tell me that they no longer sin. One guy I heard preaching said he hadn't sinned in 12 years until he actually told that lie. He obviously had sinned. All of us have sin that we have to deal with. So what do we do when we give in to sin? What do we do when there's a struggle that's taking place? As we walk in this world, we get our feet dirty and we have to get them cleaned up by Christ. When David had sinned with Bathsheba and then killed Uriah, he tried to hide it. He covered it up. And for about a year, he was silent until God exposed it. And David said in Psalms 51, when I was silent, my bones grew old within me. When we cover up our sin or we have unconfessed, unrepented sin in our lives, sin that we harbor and it remains, it gets in between that relationship between us and God and doesn't allow us to have that refreshing relationship with him. The third thing that we learn from Jesus washing Peter's feet is that we can be clean again. The Bible tells us this great promise in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To confess our sins simply means that we say to him, Lord, I'm sorry, I have sinned, forgive me. The Bible tells us that if we say we love him, but we don't keep his commandments, then we're lying. We're going to want to keep the commandments of Christ. There's something inside of a genuine Christian who wants to give him purity. And this verse is wonderful. Because it tells us that if we confess our sin, let him know what our heart is, that he is faithful to forgive us, that he won't tell you no, that if you genuinely come and confess your sin, that he will forgive you and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is when we don't have things right between us and God or the people around us and God cleanses us of that and we now have a right relationship with God. And that's what Jesus was saying to Peter. The fourth and final thing that we learn is that we are blessed if we do what Jesus did, if we wash people's feet. Not some kind of a foot washing ceremony or not some kind of weird thing where we walk up to someone and say, can I wash your feet? But we take the role of a servant. Listen to what it says in John 13, verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, taking his garment, he sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord. And so you say, well, for I am. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than him who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. If you know to be a servant to the people around you, you are blessed when you do them. What a great promise for us. And what a way for us to live looking for opportunities to serve people, to wash people's feet. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. If you've liked it, then click the like button below. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.